The brain is like a library where each neuron is an individual book in this library. And the problem we have is that uh, we don't know what the books are saying and we don't even know what language the books are written in. And without that information, it's going to be very hard, obviously, to figure out how the brain works and what goes wrong during diseases of the brain. I'm Michael Heuser. I'm a professor of neuroscience at University College London. We're trying to understand how neural circuits of the brain process and store information relevant to behavior. So for us, the holy grail is to understand the neural code. So 50 years ago, we cracked the genetic code and what we want to do is try and understand how the pattern of spike firing in neural circuits of the brain represents information and stores information. So neuropixels are a new kind of silicon probe with amazing capability for recording the activity of the brain. So these are silicon probes which are thinner than the human hair and have a thousand recording sites and allow you to record from more neurons than ever before. Because the traditional way of recording brain activity is to record it one neuron at a time. So this approach is a major breakthrough because we can record from more neurons than we can ever record from before. So it's going to give us unprecedented information about how the brain works, especially in decision making. The structure and function of the neural circuits of the mouse brain appear to be very similar to those in the human brain. Moreover, mice are actually pretty smart. They can make quite sophisticated decisions and we can use them for uh, quite uh, cognitively challenging decision-making tasks. The mouse is navigating in a virtual reality environment to try and reach a target. So the real world equivalent of that is, for example, uh, navigating through the streets of London to reach a material board. This requires integrating visual cues with knowledge of the environment and a cognitive map which represents the world inside the circuits of your head. We're also now able to explore how different brain areas are interacting together and sharing information between each other. However, even though this is a dramatic leap, we're still only recording from a small fraction of the neurons that are active during decision-making in the brain, even with this remarkable new technology. And so the, the challenge is to uh, further scale up this technology and also develop other new technologies. To fully understand diseases of the brain, like Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, autism, we first need to understand how the neural circuits of the brain work. And once we have that information, um, this will give us a handle on what's going wrong in these diseases.